So then it was time for the main event, and it was Blood and Guts, Moxley, Claudio, Wheeler Yuta, Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz versus Jericho, Sammy, Jake Hager, Daniel Garcia, Matt Menard, and Angelo Parker. And uh, it was six-on-six war games, so two guys started, which were Sammy and Claudio, and then uh, after all of the intervals, uh, everyone slowly entered the ring, and of course, once everybody was in, then it was... uh, Anything yeah. goes, pinfall, submission, the, the, surrender. The match, the match beyond, but you can't use the term the match beyond because WWE owns that term. Yeah. So uh, this match was but insane. But it was, it, was, it was original 1980s Dusty Rhodes War Games, you know, with the, the top of the cage. and I mean, it's just basically, yeah, the, the, the Dusty, although they got out of the cage, you know, which um, I don't remember when I would watch the Dusty Rhodes War Games, the ones that he actually booked himself. I don't remember anyone ever getting out of the cage. It was always in the cage. Well, this was all in the cage until everybody was in there. And then uh, Ty Conti ended up uh, throwing the referee to the side of the cage, getting the key, opening the door. And at that point, people started... Because when the doors open, you have no choice but to climb up on top of the cage. And so uh, Jericho... Well, Jer- Jericho Jericho was the first one up, right? He starts climbing up onto the top of the cage. And then Eddie Kingston chases him. Eddie Kingston goes after him. And uh, they brawled up there for a while. And uh, and I think Sammy was up there, too. And Sammy was up there and got thrown off. So what happened was they're all up there on the top of the cage. And for a while, like, the camera's filming them. And none of them are doing anything. And they're sort of standing there, and they're kind of talking to each other, and they're not moving. And all of a sudden, you you see Jericho, and he screams. I think the guy's name is Chris. He goes, Chris, are we on break? He's at the top of his lungs. And uh, apparently Chris said, no, we're not on break. And so then he starts telling me, Jesus, we're not on break. Let's do something. So that's when Eddie... <laughs> well, I mean, that's was, that was so... I mean, the thing with this, which I mean, didn't hurt. It's just the reality of it is they, they did they did two long breaks, right? Well, yeah. They're, they're, well, I and think there might have been them, three actually. Okay, but one of them in one of but but in two in two of them you could see it, so it was picture picture in picture, right? But one of them they actually went to a commercial where you couldn't even see it, so there was two or three minutes, um, you know, of the match that we didn't see anything. So that was kind of I mean, so I'm sure that's the whole thing. It's like Jericho didn't want to do anything at all, you know, during those, you know... Well, you certainly don't want to throw Sammy off the cage during a commercial break. Well, they were doing stuff during the commercial break that, you know, but I mean... You yeah, but you're to... not you're not doing throwing off the cage during Well, no, the no, 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 break. of course not. Of course not. You can't do that then during the break. So Kingston throws Sammy off the top of the cage. Sammy goes through what they claim was the timekeeper's table, but they made very sure to, uh, to gimmick... This would have been like... You know, Satnam Singh, I think, would have been too short for this timekeeper table. But Sammy crashes well, through this they, table. It was, and it, was, it was two tables, actually, under, under a, you know, a, 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 a whatever, a, a cloth. But because um, when the show started, somebody had actually um, had texted me and just goes, there's two tables set up on, you know, there's basically two tables, crash pads set up for the show. So it was set up like before, you know, before the show ever started. So then Claudio climbs up on top of the cage, and they start brawling up there. And uh, by the way, there had been, uh, I mean, there were thumbtacks, there, Moxley. Broken glass. Yeah, Moxley the Ripper's in there, and I think he's gigging everybody. There's blood everywhere. There's glass. They, they, they pulled the, um, in one of the rings, they pulled the canvas and the padding off, so you had the exposed wood. But I didn't see, I mean, I'm sure somebody took some bumps on the wood, but I didn't see him because... The thing is, is like, this was the one thing also is like, when those guys got on top, the cameras only focused on them. Like, you never saw, like, there's, there's, um, well, Santana's out of action, but there's uh, eight guys basically who are fighting and bleeding all over the place in the cage doing whatever. And I have no idea what they were doing because we didn't see any of it. So, um, yeah. So they, uh, they're they up on top of the cage. Claudio goes up there, and uh, everybody on top of the cage, I mean, they've still got thumbtacks in their backs. Jericho's boots are like, the bottom of his boots are completely covered in thumbtacks. And uh, you could see, like, with Eddie and Jericho, you know, anything they were doing up on top of the cage, like, if they took a bump, they'd just, like, get low or whatever. And then there's Claudio, who, who apparently has no fear of heights whatsoever. This dude's running around. He's running from one edge to the other. He grabs Jericho, starts doing this giant swing on top of the cage, which was the scariest damn thing I ever saw in my life. Because, 
like Jericho's spinning around. And it wasn't even the middle of the cage. They're like over by the edge. And Claudio's just spinning this guy, spinning this guy. And uh, finally, the the big spot at the end is there's four guys up there. There's uh, Matt Menard, there's Jericho, there's Claudio, and there's Eddie. And so Eddie puts Jericho in the stretch plum, and uh, Claudio puts uh, Matt in the sharpshooter. And uh, Eddie's just cranking and cranking. He wants to submit Jericho. He wants to submit Jericho. But uh, before Jericho can submit, Matt Menard submits in the sharpshooter. And uh, they haven't really told the story on TV, really. But uh, the story is that Eddie Kingston hates Claudio. They, 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 did, they definitely did on the pay-per-view. And they did a little bit during, not hard, but they, it was mentioned in commentary, you know, that they have a problem and everything. Yes. I mean, it, it, it was, it wasn't ignored. But, but this is wa- not like a, a, I mean, it can't be a long-term story because the guy showed up on Sunday. But yeah. uh, that is the story that they hate each other. And so, so and Eddie is so disappointed that, uh, that Claudio ended up getting the win. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a double. I mean, the thing is he wanted to submit Jericho so bad. Yes. So, but he also was mad that Claudio stole his submission from him because he would have gotten Jericho to submit, except Claudio got Menard to submit faster. So that's like, it's like a weird addition to, you know, the already, you know, the already heat. So, I mean, obviously they're going to at some point be doing Eddie Kingston and Claudio as a program, you know, based off of all of that. And this is like stage one of it. So the uh, what I also liked about this a lot was uh, they they did the finish. I don't know how many minutes before the show went off the air. It's probably like three four minutes. And so sometimes you see these matches, and it's like you see the finish, and then the show just goes off the air, and it's like very abrupt. This one there was a finish. The baby faces celebrated. All of the baby faces climbed up onto the top of the cage. Except for Santana. They even got, well, obviously, they even got the referee, Bryce Remsburg, had to climb up onto the top of the cage so he could raise everybody's hand. And we got a lot of shots of, of Eddie and Claudio, and Eddie's all disappointed, and Claudio still gives him a fist bump and says, we won anyway. And I just liked how much time they gave to the post-match because it made the entire match feel more special because we got that extended celebration there. At the end, so overall, this was a hell of a match. I mean, it was a great match. It was a great match for what it was supposed to be. I mean, the problem—not the problem, but this is definitely not. You know, when they, I, I feel they go to the hardcore way too much. Um, but in blood and guts, you have to. But you know, even so, it's like the thumbtacks in the glass. And you know what? In this, well, match, dude, if you call the thing blood and guts, dude, you got to have blood and guts. Well, you have to have blood, but I don't know that you really need thumbtacks and glass. You know. Um, Especially when you're like a, when you're a major league on national television, um, you know. I mean, it's not and it's not pay per view. I think that the you know you're 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 turning a lot of people off with the thumbtacks in the glass, and it's like you're you're turning a lot of people on and turning a lot of people off. But I think that they have you know it's it's been a dangerous thing all along, and it's like you want to. You know, you want to grow your audience. You got to be you, you. You can do this every now and then, but they do it way too much. Um, the other thing on the show that I thought was, uh, I, you know, I felt like, again, coming off of that pay-per-view that there was a little bit of talk at certain points of, you know, hey, we had a really good pay-per-view and Orange Cassidy and Will Ospreay had a five star match. That's what they said. Um, Tony Schiavone said that, but um, but it really wasn't hammered home. And I mean, this of 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 this pay per view. Like, I just think of like when WWE does a mediocre pay per view, and then you come back on Raw and they they do these big video clips, and and basically, you know, one of the things as far as like that that you want to do in the long run is make history okay and the only way you make history is not actually it's not necessarily doing things great but it's harping on things over and over and over and over again for you know and and in doing so you make people think they must have been great because we saw history and there's a lot of people who watch that pay-per-view and we saw history first you know this and the show was so great and everything 
I watch this show, and it's like, there's a mention of it, but like, and they even mention you can get the replay. But man, it should have been pushed. They should have had a video package. It should have been pushed harder. You know, it should have been like, you know, the, you know, um, you know, like, again, like, you know, if you missed it, because a lot of people did, you know, you missed this great show. So either, you know, get the replay or next year when it comes back, don't make the mistake of thinking, ah, you know, I don't know these guys. So I'm not going to buy the show when, in fact, it might be the, the show of the year. So I did think that they really um, I thought that they dropped the ball on the promotion and coming off of the pay-per-view and just coming off of the stories on the pay-per-view and everything like that, you know, compared to what WWE would do. On the bright side, since this was the biggest dynamite crowd since Los Angeles, and Los Angeles, um, they did not shoot the crowd well. It was like any other Wednesday. This one, partially because of the the nature of shooting from the t you know the top of the cage and everything, but they definitely and, and they've been doing this ever since Los Angeles. They have always tried to push that we got we've got a sellout crowd, we've got a giant crowd. Even the weeks that they just have a normal crowd, they've been they've been pushing it now, you know, just trying to get that idea that this is a hot thing and people are coming. But this one, you know, they pushed thirteen thousand people, which was not thirteen thousand people, but it was a good it was a great crowd, and. um you know, they did show wide shots where you could tell that it was a pretty darn good crowd. Well, part of it is that when you when you film a regular show, there's one ring, and so the ring takes up the entire frame, and so you inherently see less of the building. So because there were two rings on this show, you often saw the, the shot where both rings uh, took up the entire frame, so you actually saw much more of the building, and it looked like a larger building with more people in it. It was a larger building than they usually run. I mean, it was the, you know, Little Caesars Arena. But they should do, you know, like those panoramic shots when they have a crowd of, um, I would say, 8,000 or more. Because the one thing that, that TNA, and it's funny because um, it was Keith Mitchell, who's no longer with AEW, but he was the production guy. The one thing with TNA that I remember was that they could make a crowd of 3,000 people look like 6,000 people. They could make a crowd of 8,000 people look like 15,000 people. Um, and that's, you know, a good thing. And with AEW, you know, it's like they make a crowd of 15,000 people look like it's a crowd of 5,000 people. So it's not doing you a lot of, you know, I mean, it's you're not getting that majestic thing and you're not getting that feel that this thing is gigantic. Um I mean, it's still way more major league, and you got the more major league announcing, and the crowd is so hot. I mean, that's the one thing is they have really hot crowds. So in that sense, it, it comes off real well. But, um, yeah, I think uh, still – but they did a better job. Like this – on this one, I mean, it felt like it was a really big crowd. And, um, you know, they reacted really good to the show too. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio – we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.